great day in South Carolina. Y'all, we just uh, we just left a few minutes ago. The first Lady Melania Trump and the Second Lady Karen Hinch just got off the airplane. They're just in Charleston right now. President Trump was in Columbia last week. We have visitors from those kind of visitors all the time in South Carolina. We really do box way outside our way. We are about halfway in population, about halfway up or down the scale in geography or square miles. But there's a lot going on in South Carolina. And by the way, somebody's from Bowling is here, I'm sure. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary. Somebody from Bowling, raise your hand. Come on, I got to be somebody from Bowling. <laughs>
A lot of folks after World War II, particularly with the GI Bill and those things, everyone wanted to go to a four-year school. Well, as we know in manufacturing, the world has changed so much. So many of the great jobs, a huge percentage of the great jobs and careers are now in, in manufacturing. So much so that last year we passed a law, again, jumping ahead in South Carolina, to where in, we passed a law to allow a, an advanced degree, a baccalaureate degree in advanced manufacturing. Uh, Dr. Miller up at Greenville Tech invented that. They've got it going right now, and we're trying to spread that around the rest of the state. What else do we want to do? We want to cut taxes on you and everybody else. We want to remove the regulations that are blocking progress. We want to make things smooth. We want to be sure that you know about the access to the best port on the Atlantic coast, which is the Port of Charleston. The Port of Charleston, unlike any other port in the country, we get ready to go to 52 feet at low tide. What that means is you can bring things in or send things out 24 hours a day, two ships wide going in and out. And also, 52 feet would be so, so deep that we'll be able to accommodate the largest ships in the world. Those ships, it's hard to believe, can carry up to 23,000 of those 20-foot container units. It's hard to believe. I haven't counted them. And, uh, but I'd like, I'd like to understand how they can get them on, but they do. Our port of Charleston also has something they don't have anywhere else, and that is we have two inland ports. One in Dillon and the earlier one up in Greer in Spartanburg. Inland port is a railroad. It's Norfolk Southern runs to, to, through Greer and Spartanburg and the ports out there and crosses the ports out there. It crosses I-85. And the Dillon port, CSX lines, runs from the port of Charleston through Dillon and across 95. That saves time, that saves money. People bringing things in can stop them there, drop it off, or go by train overnight down to Charleston, get on the ship, and be gone. The reverse is true. That, that opens up a great amount of trade and a great amount of logistical advantage for everybody here in this room if you're in dealing with that, that kind of work. But we're always looking for new ideas. Anything, any idea that you have or any problem that you have, if there's anything that you need that you think we can help with, call us up. We ask people to don't stand on formality. You don't need a meeting. Just pick up the phone and call. Because like I say, most, we mostly related to each other one way or another anyway. But we have set records in South Carolina. We will continue to do it. There are a couple of things you may not have heard of. We have a... In at USC, we have a center there. It's the Center for Applied Manufacturing and Advanced Analytics. Most people haven't heard about it. What is that? Samsung, Siemens, Nephron, IBM, Jaskawa, who make robots, Floor, and Boeing, all in the same building, all bumping into each other, asking each other questions on innovations concerning analytics. That's the only such place in the world. Up at Clemson, they have an advanced manufacturing center going on there where BMW sends vehicles over in different stages of, of construction. And they have PhDs from Clemson working with researchers and developers from Boeing. They have master's candidates. They have PhD candidates. They have bachelor's degree candidates. They have technical college students. And they have some high school students all working together shoulder to shoulder the older, experienced people know how to do things. The younger people who are trying to learn don't believe there's anything that they can't do. And you put that together with that much talent and break down the walls between them and you just go off the scale. That also is the only such place in the world, in the United States where that's going on. We're developing brain power. You can't do anything without brain power. I want this, I want South Carolina to be known not only as the most beautiful place in the whole world, but also the center of brain power, the center of technology, the center of invention, the center of imagination. And with our three major research universities, with all the colleges, four years and two years and everything else we got, we're on our way. But what we need to know is what do we need to know? What do we need to do? What is it that you need to make your work more productive, to make it worldwide, to make it more prosperous, because the more prosperity there is for every business in this room, of course, the more prosperity there is for all the people in our state, and that's what our job is. This is what, this is what they tell me with businesses that come in. I've heard it in languages, had to have interpreters.
telling me this, but this is what they've all said when I asked them, what can we do for you? Why is it that you're coming to South Carolina? And they go through these things that I mentioned. They say, well, you have the three major research universities that will all collaborate, communicate, and work, and partner with us. And you also have the great technical college system, which is the best that there is. And they work together and partner. And they're partnering with businesses. We pass laws in order to allow for that, to facilitate that partnership and that continuum of education. They say that we love the port. The port's great. The mountains, the oceans, all that is just wonderful. And the best thing they say, we come here for three reasons. The people, the people, the people. That's what they say, everyone. I said, what do you mean by that? They say, well, they're hardworking, they're industrious, they are honest, and when they give you their word, they keep it. I've heard the chairman of a lot of these businesses say, South Carolina is a handshake state. Maybe some of you from other states, maybe you've heard the same type of thing. But they tell me that every time. That, that's important. I'm so proud of the people of, of this region and of our state. And I think I figured out how we got there. I can't speak to all the history of all the other states, but I know in South Carolina we have a military history. Going back to 1670, we've been in every war that had been. But we also have, and we, by the way, yesterday we unveiled a new program, this Revolutionary War Liberty Trail. There are over 200 battle and skirmish sites in the Revolutionary War in South Carolina, more than any other state. Started up in, uh, Boston or so, came to South Carolina, then ended up up in Virginia, where the last battle was, but it was won in South Carolina. That's what all the scholars are saying now. And that is a reflection of our military tradition. It's further down by the Citadel, pumping out cadets and great citizens every year, but also our Judeo-Christian faith. This was a place of tolerance. This was a place of faith. When Peggy and I drive to, we go to the beach for vacation, go to Paulie's Island. I was curious. I've gone back so many times over so many years. I thought, well, I'm just going to check how many churches. I've seen churches everywhere. Y'all drive around and see churches everywhere. Some small, some large. So I counted. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you authoritatively, from, uh, from my house in Columbia to Pauley's Island, which is 137 and a half miles, there are 83 churches along the road that you can see from the road. There are churches, and I think there are two synagogues you can see between Columbia and, and, and all these other, they all go, but anyway, that tradition of faith, that tradition of military, discipline, honor, respect, courage, you put those together in paradise, is what you see when you look out the window, and you got dynamite. And that's what we have here in this state. Mark Clark, great general, four star, youngest in the history of the country, was president of the Citadel, he said, and I quote, there's more patriotism per square inch in South Carolina than any place in the world. So that's why we are succeeding. It took a while to get here. We had to have interstate highways and air conditioning, but by God, it had to arrived so bad we. <laughs> and we're just getting started good. But it's all based on work, the work ethic, all based on manufacturing, all based on production, based on academics, and we got to have good education for the children. That's the main, one of the main things we're working on now to be sure that we have no gaps in our education system. We know that we have some weak spots in education in South Carolina. We know that. To know that you have some weak spots is not a bad thing. But to know that you have weak spots and not doing something about it, that's a bad thing. So we will fix that. And I can promise you this, if there's anything that any of you need that you think that we can do in government or out of government, through partnerships, through cooperation, through listening to ideas, we, want to, we know we want the taxes lower, we know we want the regulations out the way, we're working on all of those things, we want to eliminate retirement income on military, law enforcement, first responders, uh, we have, uh, this again, a military state. We've got eight major bases here. We have great veterans, great military presence, great military tradition that helps make us strong. If any of you in that category, I hope that this will help you. But anything that we can do, you got to let us know because we do not know what your needs are unless you tell us. So again, I thank you for being here. 
We wish you strength and prosperity and good health. I uh, hope everybody that lives here is, is happy. I hope those that are visiting will come back. And finally, one more. Everyone here, tell the children in South Carolina, be sure to tell the children to be proud of the state of South Carolina because it is the best place on earth to live, work, and raise your children. Thank you.